see their own task and you'll be seeing a display as well from what we can see and we'll also be able to demonstrate uh, information that's from the library and Alliance with Dave. Uh, again, this is the e-board assembly that the school board uses and also Dade County and a lot of local governments do. And this is in the test environment. Uh, so once we get finalized with everything, we go out public, we'll go under our city uh, website and go to meetings and then there'll be a link to this and it'll take you right to this for the public view. And it's really good software and when we start, like two weeks ago, we sent out items to the commissioners, do you have anything you want to add to the meeting? So they have a week before we publish it to the media a week and then when we get that out, we'll be able to give it to the media and then it'll also be on our website and you'll be able to see everything that we see and as we get financials finalized and things and we attach it. It's more or less an open view for the public to see and also records it. It's a really good software that we're using some of our sports funds to do this. But uh, going over, Commissioner, anything we need to add or remove to the agenda of the workshop? If not, we'll open up to the minutes of the January 9th uh, meeting. Uh, again, a lot of this was given back to you earlier. If you have any additions or deletions to the uh, minutes from December 12th, <coughs> or from, excuse me, from January 9th. Here none, we'll add that to the consent agenda for uh, approval under new items of consent agenda and new business. Uh, no proclamations or appointments. Splash items, uh, we do have one item. Uh, guess we're gonna bring this up and let Steve, the police chief, talk about it. Uh, I attended this meeting with him and they can talk about what we are, but we're talking about items for our new patrol cars or not, y'all wanna go into this. I'm going to let Chief Hope knows what I can do. You're going to be doing it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, my IT hat for our other side that I work with the county, we've been dealing with this. WatchGuard is this company that county patrol, city patrol has used 10 plus years, almost 15 years. Motorola has bought uh, WatchGuard out and they are changing as technology changes the camera systems for our cars and body cameras that our officers wear are changing. We are currently have five cameras waiting to be repaired that they don't know when they're going to get the parts for. It's a, again, it's an older technology. So we asked them to come up and meet with us. Chief Bowen, Investigator Dillon, uh, Tommy Bradford, the Major, uh, Matt Cole, the Lieutenant, myself, Daniel Jones, which we handled the IT side for the county side. We sat down with them and want to know what's the life. Well, the body cameras are discontinued. We had till around October of last year to buy anymore. They've now moved to the V300, which is this item right here, which is the body worn camera. Now it's a $995 and that's about what we were paying for them originally. Um, so we got into talking with them about that, saying all right, they will still work with the current 
computer camera system, hard drive system in their cars, but it's got to have some software up there. Which also, we have a server that's downstairs, and the sheriff's office has its servers where all of our camera evidence is stored. When the officers or investigation needs to pull that evidence, they pull that evidence, save it, and save it on that system because we know the courts can go on for years. So we have to have that data. It's in an encryption system and going to be pulled by certain people, you know, the chief and the investigator and the sergeants when they need it for the DA and all that. So we start asking them, all right, what's the life of the car cameras, which is this right here, it's $6,315. And they said to us, we don't know when the end of life, but it's coming. So looking ahead, not looking right now, but looking ahead, we got three brand new cars. We still only got one down at the shop, two sitting out back that we're still waiting to start. The 29th, I believe, the first car mm -hmm. gets started, for, or the 28th, for 20-something. Yes. So, um, waiting to get started getting installed, and we're worried about putting the old technology back in there with a new car, and if they give us into the life, we're going to have to be going back in and reinstalling this in a car. So our thoughts are to go ahead with these three new cars as we continue on as put as upgrade these as we go. Now these uh, cars, these have been in here since these first explorers were put in. And, uh, we're in the same boat in the county. Uh, we're, we're ordering they have already ordered one new system at the last commission meeting for a car that uh, we're taking out of administration to put on patrol. So right now we're looking at the $6,315 plus the $995. This other stuff is things that we don't need and we're waiting to hear back from our salesman. The whole bunch, I was a little aggravated when I seen it was $63,000, but they're trying to sell us a server and software. We've got all this stuff. so. I'm a little aggravated with Motorola because I didn't do their homework on our company. Our city and our county have done us both this same way. It's been nearly a month ago when we met with them, and we just got this this morning. So uh, I kind of got ugly with them on the phone. Told them I need to do their homework, look at what you currently have. We've been with this company 15 years. There's records. You need to figure it out. I need a price for just three basic car systems with body cameras. So what we're asking is that we uh, go ahead and for our officers. Again, this is safety and evidence for them. Uh, keeps them. Sheriff's office is in the same boat as they move forward. So we're asking for this. They are ready to be. We'd like to get them here now because we've got a car fixing to happen at the end of the month. We're going to hate to delay it much longer. <clears throat> if we don't go ahead and do it now, we'll have to do it later. It's going to cost us. Front, the uh, back where the uh, in my, where the prisoner cage is, and it's got the audio for there. You know, catch them doing things. Just 
they turn around and hit their body camera, it turns the body camera on plus the car camera and everything. It's, it, it works away from the car as the officer approaches different situations. He feels the need to record. All right. Financial software, uh, we have been looking um, at something besides QuickBooks for our city. Uh, we have a lot of downtime or manual input time for uh, manually inputting all the taxes that come in from Harris uh, when they're sent to us. Uh, it's been this way for a long time and we're really outliving what QuickBooks can do. We went with three different companies based on uh, what some other cities have <coughs> used, uh, Harris Local Government, GWorks, and Edmonds Software. Now this is the uh, quotes on it, and we've done a simple breakdown here of what they are. Uh, I'm going to let uh, April go into this because she's the one that dealt with this and met with them. Uh, I have looked at all three of them. But I'm going to let her talk about why she feels which one is the best and what we're going for. The Edmonds GovTech actually came out and did a very detailed, probably about three hours demo. Um, they are able to offer everything and more that we could need at this point and in the future. Uh, they are ranked high in the state of Georgia as well as in other states as well. Um, I have reached out to a couple of the cities and counties that use Edmonds. They're all really pleased. Uh, talk about the ease of support. Um, they did say, you know, at the end of the year when things are coming to the end of the year, then everybody may have to call you back or whatever, you know, but they're all really pleased. Uh, the first investment, of course, includes the software setup, subscription, everything for them to pull all of our data out of QuickBooks, all of our accounts are in QuickBooks. They will go out and extract all of that data and upload it into their system. They will actually come out and do training on the system. They have a, a I think what they called it, a hub for commissioners. You can actually go out and look at the dashboard for, your, for any of the departments, but for example, the police department, if you want to go out and put in your line item that you're looking under to see how you stand on your maintenance, you can click on that and it'll tell you exactly what was spent for your maintenance, how much you budgeted for maintenance, how close you are, basically looking at a budget without having to be printed off. Like a year to date dashboard like what we see. Mm -hmm. And you can look at, you can, if you like looking at graphs, you can look at your graphs, you set up the way you want to look at it. Um, they are able to meet with they can pull our tax information from the state and do everything that we've been doing manually, they can do it all. Uh, Harris Smart Fusion, I know uh, Rossville was going to Smart Fusion. They are quite a bit, as you'll see, more expensive. Um, not only that, but I have been told, I ha they did not come out and do a demo for me. They didn't. All they sent me was a quote. You know, uh, I have been told that it's harder to get them on the phone at times when you do need support. Uh, you know, they, they can do the billing. I know the county is actually moving, Angie and them are moving away from using Harris. Uh, I believe they already have as far as for their tax stuff. Um, G Works. Really, after they sent me their quote, they called me back and said, how, how much of a deal breaker is it if we can't do your tax stuff? I'm like, well, you know, that, that's a big thing. That's what the whole thing was. I said, it would be a complete deal breaker. As you see, they're very lot cheaper, uh, but they cannot do what we need as far as taxes or anything in the future. So how many tax records did we put in for information? We put in 2,200 tax records manually. So that's creating a manual invoice in QuickBooks 27 <coughs> times that all three ladies would sit there and just pound in daily. If people come in and we hadn't got it, we had to manually. And we've done this for years. 
It was a big, time-consuming project. But several things they also can do. The uh, a lot of the employees I talked about uh, direct deposits. Uh, this would be an option to do that as well. It has some uh, keeps up where they can actually keep up with what they what they're doing on their sales as a, as they can log in and see it. It's going to pull the thing for the other counties that actually use. I don't think you have that. Did you? I know County the County was one of them. Um, some of the uh, Monroe County in Georgia, Lawrence County, Crockett County, Sumter County, Stevens County, Bucks County, Meter, uh, Calida, Turner, City of Moultrie is some of the, and this is some of the Georgia, the dots right here have any Georgia cities and counties are using these. Calida is a pretty good sized county as well. Uh, and Caldwell County. So they, do, they do limit the size of governments that they support. Uh, he told me when he came up for the demo that they were approached by Fulton County and they turned them down because they did not want to get tied up in such a large uh, city. <coughs> it would take time away from everything else. You know, we, we just want you to look at this. This is something we went out for three things that we've seen at, we've seen at the conferences and what's out there, but it's really designed for municipality, governments. We can, uh, it's even got an option if we wanted to do work orders in it that we're currently in with our works, but we've already invested it. Put a lot of stuff in there, and there's a lot more features that they, we felt they had. And plus, you know, it, this is a hosted service where we're not having to purchase a server. It's hosted with their services and secured. We can have up to 10 users, I believe, at one time, at one time if we needed that much as things are happening. And, uh, it's a lot of online payments for everything. Yes. And it also direct, what does it do on that? You said it. When, it, when you make an online payment, well, right now we have to turn around and put that online payment into QuickBooks. It will automatically upload into this software. We won't have to touch it again, and so, it eliminates a lot of error between your receipt book, put it in QuickBooks, writing it on the sheet. You know, printing out where it comes to the web. I was reading, um, and, it, and it may not have been, it may not have been the G work, uh, where uh, they they can change one of them. I, may not have even been that one because I'm trying to find it again, where it was talking about they can change our rates at any time. Change up. This, if I'm not mistaken, it's like locked in for five years at least. Oh, okay. It's like our annual thing that we pay. Okay. Talking about our posted rates and things like that. Well, it was our, it was our annual renewal but in between that time, they could uh, they could raise our rates, and uh, I, I wish I could find it. Look, I'm trying to get used to this uh, technology. Well, we uh, <laughs> we'll get you the copy of each breakdown, and let you see it. We just I mean, I'm it. sure y'all looked at it. I was just asking. Yeah, I think y'all need to look at it. We'd like to let the attorneys look at it too, so we'll get you <clears throat> hard copy so you can look at it. But you know, in, in the breakdown, when we look at you know, an implementation fee of this plus the first year service annually, it would be $27,000 a year for software services, 24 seven support, and all the hosting services there. Now we can lock that in if we've done a five year contract, things like that, it's a, it's a big difference for us to move to something like this. And we're just really outgrowing QuickBooks. It's not really designed for municipality governments. I think everybody's outgrowing. Yeah. And it's getting harder to get help with them. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's something we just recently updated the counties, which they use Microsoft Dynamics. And it's been there since I've been there. And we just, uh, uh, two weeks ago, we moved to a new server, which we do in house. We priced in house versus uh, hosting. And hosting is so, our 
size of our government is so expensive it was going to be three or four times what it would be if we hosted ourselves and buy a server and every five or six years update the server and software. So hosting's expensive, but we're a very uh, small city. And so that's more or less just for information. We'll give you the month to talk about it. If anybody ask questions to us about it, and then we can bring it back up next month. Brew pub ordinance. Uh, I've been staying in contact with everyone about this, and when I sent you a text out later, once uh, my attorney sent this back, I emailed it out to everybody. Again, luckily they were currently working on this uh, project uh, with uh, City of Lafayette, which is another city they uh, for, and this is uh, what was brought to us by Mr. Faircloth, and I'm sorry, the other gentleman's name. Research, Mr. Clifton Research about uh, investments of some properties here that they're interested in and you know so here we got this back and we've had it back for a little bit uh, so I'm going to see if y'all had any thoughts or divisions or what you see on it. Uh, Look pretty straightforward to me. Um, I, sent, I sent him a copy of it as well. We did, we did have one question on say if we host an event um, will this license can we use that license to also sell beverages at that event, say if it's off-site somewhere? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I mean, trying to attract a community type event, um, <clears throat> perhaps fall, Christmas, uh, some type of seasonal um, community gathering. And a lot of times you see in a, in a lot of other um, cities that there, there's a lot of vendor support, sometimes sole sponsorship, um, surrounding establishments such as this, so, um, wasn't sure if you know, that would be a limiting factor, possibly a special provision. Or I think it'd be a special use permit based on if it's. That's what we're learning too. If you brew your own stuff at the facility, but if you also have the other brands, you still have to get your wine, malt beverage license. If you do liquor, you have to do the liquor license as well. In certain things, I believe it has to stay either on the facility or inside a special use area. Okay. So I'd have to deal with him because we've had that question come up before. I don't think I have it. I've dealt with it with the county as well whenever they were doing the, uh, the singing event down there on the farms. Uh, oh, got tell. Yes, yeah, yes, they yeah. come up. Yeah. So again, it would have to be a license. Uh, facility that's current got Georgia license of those things and if you go on the side and it also gets back in ordinances but yes what we're kind of thinking is like uh, maybe like a Highland Games yeah you know. so it may be on that same property just outside of the property around it yeah, yeah. yes and maybe awesome. as written it is uh, exclusive to the premises yeah but yeah. just be outside of the facility most likely if you think of like Jefferson's and other places was a uh, you know, they got the port setting and they got it locked in. It's, you have to exit inside the facility. Okay. That's where a lot of the laws come in with that that we have learned as well. Uh, it also come up at the pizza place on lookout as well. I remember doing that about outside seating and stuff where you had to exit back inside. Back through the main. Yes, it could have just like a, you can't have somebody grab and jump out and go yeah. or hand stuff across. And I, they kind of talked about that. But we can. I believe the legal classification is for your guardian. Yes. Sir. Commissioners, do y'all have any thoughts on the ordinance? <clears throat> I read through it and it just, I'm not around it, it seemed pretty straightforward. I didn't, I didn't know. It'd, it'd be a first time for us, I guess. But even if they get a license and do this, which they still could go to rent the, uh, <coughs> Building the curb or having it went, just can use those licenses. I don't know. We'd have to find out from the attorney. I just, I just jotted a note here to ask. Which meant they have to have two different licenses. Two different I think it'd be a special license. permit for a special event with alcohol. I think under B2, it talks about offer to sell any of the alcohol beverages of malt beverage, wine, mm -hmm. including distilled spirits. But then that also gets into making your own stuff there and selling it. That's what this would allow. The other stuff would fall under the other ordinance and uh, 
kind of stepped in the same permits as we went to the other vendors and restaurants. So they can sell a maximum of 5,000 barrels. Well, there. <laughs> Is it 100 gallon or 20 gallon? <laughs> <laughs> so, so good. I don't know what a barrel, I guess they look at a barrel. Yeah, I think there's a standard size. Yeah. So. There's a facility in Gatlinburg, similar to what y'all talking about, that brew around downstairs, <coughs> and you go upstairs to the rest. <coughs> yeah, top of the rocks is the same way. They brew their own beer there too. As soon as you walk in, it's right to the right. And it also goes down to the basement. That's where theirs is. So I'm kind of saying like a, a like off premise special event uh, on the same premises or on the same property, just maybe outside of being moving it outside for special Yeah, just tell like a, you know, a thing. But yeah, I guess that would be a separate lot. Or it could just be a special event one time. Yeah, thing, but, you know, <clears throat> give you the thing and say, and you know, stay within those parameters. So we'll ask that as a term. Commissioners, any other thoughts? Uh, the next thing, if, if y'all uh, uh, please it, is to put it out for uh, public input, public meetings. We have to have two public, probably three, uh, two or three public inputs. Set some dates for day, evenings, and probably at the next meeting, you know, like four or five o'clock next time. To, you know, it would be citywide within the zones for this, and possibly classifying it in one of our zones, which we would think would be what zone answer? BR or just R3, two or three? Yeah, BR right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it would be all of our things for any type of establishments of that. And putting this ident identification in there as well. Guess we need limits on the limits. Like the number, or, or is that does that just fall into a restaurant? It'd be like a restaurant. I mean, we got any restaurant can qualify. I just want to make sure. Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, if four or five want to come in and make their own beer and sell and have four or five restaurants on game. I just want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> so is that a nod ahead to add this to the consent agenda? Go ahead and see the public. Uh, Hearings and we'll set them just as soon as possible. Give plenty of time for the media based on our uh, public hearing notice and our ordinance. Okay, so. mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, not okay. All right. I bring up item seven as a downtown development authority. Um, this is something that we've had in our ordinances or in our uh, code books since 1985. When I looked at it today, and I'd encourage you to go to the city of Trenton and look under and just kind of Google the Downtown Development Authority. And we've talked about this a little bit about what we can do and investors uh, along as Ryan and them have asked about what we can do, kind of like IDA does for uh, large corporations. And then Evan, since he's been appointed, me and him has been talking and being part of our economic director for the city of Trenton and Dade County and also the IDA. This is where uh, we can create the DDA. It was in development for quite a while. I'm not sure how long and what we've done, but it's things that we can do and there's grants available. Uh, and there's things that we can do to help businesses as they come in. need to decide if we want to do this, if it's something we want to do to keep uh, businesses coming in and what we can do to help current businesses and new businesses. The downtown development authority was very, very instrumental in a lot of things yeah. that happened. I, I, I wasn't on the, yeah. I wasn't part of the actual group, but I worked with them a lot. And there was, uh, was when Peter Cervelli was the downtown yeah. development uh, director. And that was back when, uh, he secured the $250,000 streetscape grant that, um, and, and I feel certain if he had stayed on board, that would have, that would have eventually happened, you know, while he was here, but, you know, then it got dissolved and uh, kind Which of we, on the back yeah, burner. We, we used a lot of stuff and we got that picked back up and got a lot 
lot more stuff done. We run out of time. And, uh, I know, but it, but, yeah. but it had, by the time we picked years. it up, it had more than double, yeah. you know, in price, uh, our cost. Well, this is our Muni code, and you can go to our website, and I just say the library Muni code. And this is where it talks about under Article 2, Section 2, to, to in order the Downtown Development Authority. This what is it can a do. wonderful thing. Yeah. If y'all don't remember it, it was a it wonderful, was. wonderful thing. So, my, my question to the commission, I mean, this is how long ago, it was Mr. Bill Tatum, Mike Tate, David Rains, Larry Case, Eddie Gifford, Shirley Dickerson, and Daryl Gaddis. On the downtown development? Well, that's when back in 85, whenever. Oh, when it started. If you look at the ordinances, oh, okay. it's, you know, that's one of the things we're really trying to do is every year update the ordinance with Munico when things are done. And we're going to try to keep this stuff to date. And you have two two-year terms, two four-year terms, and three six-year terms folks so when they rotate on and off and on but I also encourage you to go to Georgia Municipal Association and just go and then look at the data the DDA sections uh, if it's something that we want to do we need to think about getting some members that's interested and get them out there and let them talk to the commissioners or come in and put their name in the hat and we want you know folks that's what we can do and then come up with ideas what we can do to keep these businesses it's getting harder and harder we got a lot of empty storefronts around here throughout the city. And we'd like to see some more. We got a lot of property that people are looking forward to do. And we'd like to be able to offer them something uh, that can make, make it a lot easier for them to come in. So. Yeah, can I say something? Yes, sir. So when I was pitching some people up in Chattanooga who see what the potential could be here in our little city, um, First, one of the first things they asked were, what kind of incentives does our city have? And so that's when I started going to Alex and nothing or nothing anybody can do for the small guy. But of course, the idea you can do stuff for the big guy. So that's when I started talking to him about that because I do have some, you know, some unique businesses, unique eateries. Um, I have Josh Carter, uh, owner of St. John's Restaurant. He was down the other day at the motel accordion around Trenton. He asked if there was any incentives some other people I've talked to. So that's why I kind of mentioned this to yeah. you, you know, to kind of help the little guy too, instead of just the big guy. So, in, and I spoke to y'all about it one time when we were offside about, you know, things to do. Ryan had mentioned, I think East Ridge had done this to one of their businesses where a percentage of sales tax. Yeah, they get a 4% uh, paid back sales tax for, for so many years. Of the sales tax of their individual. Yeah, so that's East Ridge. So is it is like whatever the sales tax they turned in, they had to produce that information because we really don't see that. We decided to show what it is and then we, we try to give them a percentage, a percentage of that back. Just little things like that. And that's where we've got to find out legally what we can do. And when these folks come on, we've got to send them the training. So it's a, there's some stuff that's coming up in April. Uh, I'm going to try to go to it myself just to get educated if we can. It's going to be in Athens again, and if we need to get folks up here, we can. If there's some online stuff, just need to dive into it and see where we are. So it's something we want to revitalize. I think we need to start stepping through that and talk to some people and let, let, let everybody know. You know, talk to us if you're interested. We need some good, strong heads and folks that. Well, I would like to be a part of that. The difference in the, uh, the Industrial Development Authority and the uh, DDA like you said, the Industrial Development Authority. It's really for big, big businesses, but it's at the it's at the front. The DDA was real instrumental in retaining people, like they did. Um, I mean, I was even a beneficiary of their facade grant, and that was the local banks gave a um, gave a fifteen hundred dollar facade grant. If you if you put um, I don't remember how much it might have been. I might have had to do 1500 and then they matched 1500 or something. But they did things all along the way that were, uh, that was really good for, you know, our businesses that are here now instead of, you know, the small businesses. They did several things. Yeah, anything, yeah, like you said, a facade, anything to match, pay, or... Yeah, so to take care of our current businesses and any new businesses and any kind of incentives or specials, you see there's... I encourage you to any everybody just go to downtown development, Georgia GMA, Georgia Municipal Association, and there's a lot of information there. I looked at so many stuff to try to print off and attach. We were kind of running behind on some stuff today. And I 
took off after lunch to get down here and we had some issues down at the sewer department that I had to help Dwayne them with. And I had to call other reinforcements in and I had to leave them. I had to get up here and get to work. So, uh, anyway, but I, I, if it is and we get nods on the head, I think we need to try to move forward in doing this and helping our businesses. The businesses here that can continue to come here also helps keep millage down with lost and splashed that stays up come and do things, that's just a big out of the help our tax base. Continue to grow and keep taxes down on our, on our residents. Okay. I got all four nine. Okay. All right. Thank you all. All right, we're gonna go into the regular meeting. We're gonna go ahead and call our regular meeting to order. Uh, we're going into invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Sweethearts, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. It's a reminder for myself as well. So uh, we, we can thank our wives and our sweethearts for what they do and uh, remember that day. So let's go for it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and thank you for the blessing upon this city and these folks that are here, our commissioners, our employees, all of our residents, and where as we go. And be with us and as we conduct business of the city as being the best stewards of that tax funds and doing what we have to grow our little city and keep it safe. Be with us as we go in your precious name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. It is a regular scheduled meeting that takes place the second one of every month. News was notified. It's in our hallways, also posted on our website. Uh, Commissioner Rocom, I believe we had all the commissioners here. So we do have a quorum to do that. And Commissioner Norris, Commissioner Powell, Commissioner House, Commissioner Wood. This time we'll start in with uh, Commissioner's reports. And we'll start with Commissioner Norris. The uh, City of Trenton Police Department answered 259 calls for service during the month of January 2023. Conducted 2,090 business checks, answered two animal complaint calls, responded to seven domestic disturbances, 11 trespassing, 14 suspicious activities, and worked 17 traffic crashes. 61 stops were conducted in the city, resulting in a total of 33 citations being issued. Of those issues, <clears throat> 11 of them were speeding. Driver's license violation was four. Vehicle registration was five. Obstruction of a law enforcement officer was one. Insurance violation was one. Falling too closely was one. Fair to maintain lane was one. Seatbelt violation was one. Hands free device five. Criminal trespass two. And a stop sign violation one. Commissioner Powell, uh, our track perhaps a little bit closer. I'm sorry, folks. Okay. <clears throat> Community Center was rented 82 hours last month. Uh, animal control, we had 11 four quarters or complaints. And recreation, ball fields, and parks are not being used that now, so it's slow at the park at this time. Get all the lock cars filled. I think that's right. I think he's got four right now, right on the past there. Certification. So we got is that everybody you need? Mm -hmm. All right, fire and utility, Commissioner House. Um, the sewer department had 17 underground locates, three emergency locates. 12 sewer calls. The monthly inspections were um, new construction, then four remodel three, property reviews two, and two additions for a total of 11. 
They completed three electrical and HVAC and plumbing inspections and a new construction at Myrtle Circle. The fire department had a total of 86 calls. They were dispatched and canceled in route to 33 of them. Seven of them were fire related, two accidents, 29 medical, and 15 standbys. That's it. Street Park, Commissioner. Other than our normal stuff, we um, we did, we was very happy to assist uh, Ryan and Jameson and Jerry Henniger on the, well, they actually put the signs up, but we tried to help clean up the best that we could. Oh, yeah, yeah, all that. Around the great Yeah, see, that's very lot of We was happy to do that, and we appreciate <laughs> all that they did. I think it looks really good. Yeah. There's a lot of work there, and I know, I know, I know what it's like to volunteer and still have to beat your head up against the wall. Our equipment has not made it to GovDeals yet, but uh, we do have all the information, and Ansel's going to get that done before our next meeting, right? So we'll have a whole list of equipment on there, and I, I did have a couple of calls from people out in the community. Um, I guess they had heard that. Maybe they heard at the meeting or whatever a, a couple of pieces of equipment that we wanted to know if we could sell them and write out to them. And I told them just to go and go to bills to, to uh, bid. And they didn't like that. But if they call here to uh, April, I mean, that's, you know, that's the only You know, the good thing is if they, if they buy it, they don't have to pay shipping. It's here, you know. Um, and one thing I wanted to mention is, uh, okay, we're looking for two seasonals. So if you know, you know two young guys with big strong backs, we'd love to. Or girls. Um, we need two seasonals. And then I wanted to mention that I went on the tour the other day. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't get no credit for it. <laughs> okay. Explain what the tour was. <clears throat> yeah. We went on a tour with the uh, with the IDA. I said, "Wait, there was several of us. There was a representation from the school department, from the uh, from the uh, school board, the uh, the county, the city, the library, the optimist, uh, you name it." And we had a really nice tour. We toured uh, Vanguard, which was really interesting. I had never, I couldn't believe that I'd never been through there, but. It was really, really interesting. I mean, we went through the whole process of making a whole trailer. And I mean, that's really, really impressive down there. And then we went to Integer. They couldn't really um, show us a whole lot because of all their clean rooms and stuff, but um, but it was still nice to go in there and meet some of the folks and, and just kind of, you know, put eyes on it. Then we went to Trenton Pressing, went through that, and the JDA fed us lunch there, but it, it was really nice, and if you ever get the opportunity to do that, you should. And uh, my there showed up, what told me to take the notes, and the next thing, <laughs> we was leaving on the bus, and Evan says, where's where's Mike Norris? And I said, well, I don't know, I know it's here, because he, he told me to take good notes. <laughs> but I didn't know that meant take good notes, because I'm out here. I've already turned all those places, I've been in them for years. But, but it, it was really, it, especially Vanguard. Yeah, and that's one reason I didn't go, plus we were doing a sewer project. Well, I know you've been all over them anyway. Yeah, way. and that's kind of like we have. It's amazing what happens in here in our city and some of these businesses. I was thoroughly impressed. Yeah, and the one that gets me the most is right over here behind us, kind of, that does all the bleak shirts, the Ford King Ranch edition stuff, that little... Knitwear place right in behind me there. Yeah. Their major teams, SEC teams, and they're all <coughs> the ones that do all their shirts and stuff. It is amazing. I mean, you wouldn't believe all this stuff's going on right here in our backyard. And they're and they're looking to. I mean, like Trenton Pressing is expanding. Yeah. Integers expanding. Um, Tri-Tex expanding. Tri-Tex is expanding too. Jeff mentioned that today. They, they've been inspecting that for more washers and 
employees and stuff. Yeah. So we really do have a lot going on. And our unemployment rates are what, like 2%, 2.3%. I was shocked. I thought there's at least 5% that wouldn't work anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but I but we are looking for two seasonal folks, if y'all know. Anybody part time, full time? Anytime. All right. Well, my report as well for the month. Again, we have been looking at a lot of this information from the software companies. Uh, again, we what we're going to look at the financials tonight is going to be our end of the year. Uh, we also uh, have got some information to get back to the commission on the uh, our audit of uh, last year. I guess we got that to get out to you. To come in. Sorry, we didn't have it for you tonight. Uh, we're also looking at um, uh, just you know working with each department uh, starting in you know with January and February starting a new budget year with us getting everything in the books it's just been really busy uh, here and I appreciate all the employees of what they do and things coming up uh, issues again we talk about as they do come up we everybody teams together and helps with whatever department it is and uh, even today when we were here uh, Steve and one of his patrolmen come up and looking at some different things that can make their jobs easier for them and uh, that's what it is, is is things that employees see or do and they bring the information we had a lot of discussion about it and <clears throat> where we go and so it's just a team effort all the way and I appreciate what everybody does but instead of me going through everything uh, that I read off our bank statements and our reconciliation this is about what our monthly stuff is uh, and this can be open record anytime. I thought I'd just do a short blurb uh, since we're going to be working with a financial software. Again, this is our general fund account. And again, we work two months in the rear. So this is the end of the physical year of 22 that we'll be looking at financials. Uh, general fund at $905,892.92. Our sewer fund, which is our utility that we have at the end of the year, was $156,745.24. Our hotel motel funds, $150,574.20. Trent Police Department, this is a seizure special funds for donations or anything that's given in or they get seized. This is $2,485.05. Uh, Trent Fire Department as well, this is a funds that we use for donations and or uh, raising for our junior program that we've talked about for the uh, firefighters and EMS of that. $2,316.34. Our ARC funding, uh, uh, talk about this, $804,115.80. Uh, this week, Commissioner, uh, or last week, Commissioner uh, uh, House, myself, uh, Dwayne and his crew, we met with our engineers. Uh, we've got uh, fixing to have our RFP ready with them, we think, maybe the end of this week for what we're calling our bar screens, which cleans up a lot of our trash that they're dealing with. Uh, that's another tour, I think. We all just get up and go down there and show everybody. <laughs> Take the cameras with us. I think they need to see what goes on down there, what kind of heartaches that we live with as these commissioners, their employees. Uh, we've all stepped in to help as, as we did today, and these guys are called day and night just like uh, Fire service and law, they, they, that stuff runs downhill, there's no stopping it. We got to handle it somehow. We've invested in some equipment to help them, but we're fixing to hope this is going to be a tremendous amount of work that's going to happen. And we've got some other improvements that we're going to be working on that we have in the past few years. Of you know, heard us talk skate or heard Dwayne talk about that, how we, like all this rain event we've had for these, this last year or more, has been really trying on our system taking on two and three fold what we should. We got pumps running 24 hours a day, several days in a row, and so much groundwater pressure coming in. Uh, we had to, we okayed emergency fund last month, if you remember, $22,000 for a pump. We couldn't rebuild it, $22,000 something dollars for a pump. So this is some of the things that we're hoping that will improve, and we've got to have this stuff and be prepared. So we'll have more time information when that goes out. Savings, this is what we you know put back uh, 
some of the larger funds that we'll have up here for the general fund, we usually make a big push into this each year for our savings. We try to have at least three plus months of, of funds in case something happens. Our 2015 splotch, $60,941. That's our, what we're going to be using for the animal uh, shelter. 2021 splotch to date, I almost failed that problem, $2,201,945.52. Then here's our general fund revenue for the end of the year. So this is December revenues for $288,372.10. Um, it's really big because our tax notices, people are trying to get everything paid for by the end of the year. So that's a pretty uh, large amount, and the same thing, the expenses for the month of December is $226,850. So 12 months of revenue collected in our city was $2,451,260.48. And expenses is uh, $2,228,808.44. So we had a, a good, uh, Good savings that can be going in is one reason why this is so high right here. So again, we operate as I think our tax final taxes were due January 6th, and we operate on that big large amount all year round. So taxes that was paid last year is what we operate in 23. So and then we get reverse again. Sewer uh, revenue for the month uh, charge for services is our sewer rates is $47,301. Expenses for the month was $30,997.60. January, 12 months of sewer was $522,494.14. And uh, expenses was $465,815.85. So we were ahead there to help put back in savings and funds for other things as well. So that'll be my report and also be the financials for uh, December and for the end of the year. Again, this will be an audited. Uh, uh, is that the audit that we had was this? No, they've just done 2021. That's right. So it's 21 that we have, and this will be hit with the auditors uh, pretty quick to be certified and sitting in the partner revenue very soon. So for any questions or comments? If not, we'll take a motion to approve the financials as seen. I make motion. Motion, Commissioner Powell. I'll second. second by Commissioner Wood. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion will carry. Again, we're going to get into appearances tonight. Uh, I don't see Miss Eloise Gass or Miss Jennifer. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so, Commissioner Wooten already touched on it, but um, a couple of weeks ago, um, dozens and dozens of trees and shrubs were installed along Tongue Creek, um, particularly in the rain garden that's behind the um, Dade County Courts facility. Um, that was a multi-organizational effort uh, to include Limestone Valley, Scenic Dade, um, the Lyman School sent volunteers, Hands Up sent volunteers, um, and all told, uh, well over 40 community members showed up to help with that. Um, thank you again, Commissioner Wooten and the uh, Streets Department for helping to Clear the brush. We um, removed a lot of invasive species, um, particularly Chinese privet and um, Japanese honeysuckle, um, which can be extremely detrimental to uh, the native habitat um, and the environment generally. Um, we also picked up a lot of trash, um, and we do have um, several plants left over that did not get installed that day. Um, so uh, with your permission, um, we would like to organize an additional event um, in a couple of weeks at the end of the month. Um, Stephen Bonsco uh, with Limestone Valley has recommended that they be placed um, in the city park uh, along Town Creek, kind of uh, behind the parking lot uh, where that, that first segment of trail was installed. Um, and this uh, bright, uh, Dade County Senior um, was at the cleanup um, and has taken an interest in helping to organize the um, potential one uh, coming up uh, as long as, as the commission and the city approves of our doing so. I just put her on the spot, but she's doing a, uh, a, a senior capstone project that's related to water quality. Um, so I'm, I'm delighted at her interest and, and uh, enthusiasm. What we're doing. 
library. Big game library. All right. Well, thanks again, as always, for having me here to present on the library. I'm proud to announce I am a Nana. Well, proud. My daughter did have her baby mama. last week. Um, he's one week old today. So I had to leave holding him to come, but I'm happy to be here. Um, these are our January statistics at the library. Once again, you're seeing really high numbers. The door count, 2,250 people for the month of January. I think that's just pretty fantastic at the library. Um, computer use, 295. Printer use, 496. We sent 60 faxes. 25 people used our study rooms um, over the course of the month. Those are the two different size rooms that you can go in and we have people do job interviews or um, they're meeting privately with someone. Um, so those were used quite a bit. Meeting room was used twice. We added 56 new books. Please come check out our new book collection. Uh, we have them all on display if you're interested. And um, someone asked me how many out-of-state patrons we had, and so I looked that up, and we currently have 626 patrons that pay out-of-state fees. That means they pay the $25 fee a year to have access to everything that our library has to offer. All right, some pro uh, program highlights for January. We collaborated with Cloudland Canyon State Park and their naturalist Jerry Wallace came and did a going batty program. So he presented that once um, for an after school program at 4 p.m. and he presented again for some homeschoolers at 1 p.m. on later in the month. And we had record attendance for that. It was incredible. We had 42 participants um, total over the month for those two programs. It's very well attended. Um, the other slide over there, Pokemon League. Uh, we handed out some flyers at school and because some several people said, oh, we didn't know this was happening. So we do that twice a month, um, the second and the fourth Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. And wow, January saw a, lot of, saw a lot of participants at our Pokemon Club. We had 58 people come over the month of January to our Pokemon League. Um, and once again, I tell people, Pokemon has so much to offer in literacy. It helps kids uh, build their fluent reading skills. They battle, they have to read the cards, they have to do arithmetic, uh, problem solving, and they have to work collaboratively. And what's really great about Pokemon Club is it's intergenerational. So we've got older kids working with younger kids. We've got parents that grew up playing the original Pokemon, um, helping kids. It's, it's, it's adding a lot of uh, vibrancy to our library, so we're really happy to have that. We also added two uh, new children's iPads in our children's area. Those are preloaded with educational software um, for kids to be able to get on and um, access different learning opportunities. I don't think I have the slide on here because before I made the slideshow, um, or it was after I made the slideshow, we got a brand new resource as well. Um, they're called launch pads, and you can check them out just like you can a Chromebook. And they are preloaded tablets. You don't need any internet. And they are educational reading apps lo uh, loaded onto these launch pads. There's read aloud storybooks, there's phonics, uh, there's five different levels, age two to 11, that you can come and check those out and get some really great sort of uh, educational reading apps along, take along in the car. You don't need the Wi Fi for that. And our Lego show, oh, you see, uh, see uh, Gunner over there. He, uh, he took part in our Lego showdown, which we do every month, where we challenge the kids to build something or do something. There's three different levels of challenge, and we've seen a lot of participation with our um, Lego showdown. Oh, there's our launch pad. They did get the slide in there. What do you know? There's our launch pads. <laughs> you get a two-week checkout, no renewals. Um, you can see these kids are at a, I think they're at a soccer game or a basketball game, and they're playing on their launch pads learning on their launch pads, some reading apps. Our teen space, I think I mentioned last month, we are sectioning off our teen space uh, from three to close, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We've got snacks, we've got a little cure set up in there. Um, there's gaming, study room. It's been really popular. If you flip to the next slide, you can see we took a quote. The snacks made my day, this is magical. That was a team that came in and they were just so excited to see some. They came in after school and they saw some snacks there and they were really excited. And next we have our month long exhibit up. This is a um, loan, it's a collaboration between Georgia Public Libraries and the Georgia Commission on the Holocaust. And we have a banner exhibit up 
um, witness to the Holocaust. You can see William Alexander III. He was part of a, um, a segregated battalion in World War II. He was a photographer. He was there and he recorded the liberation of Buchenwald. So you can come and look at the banners that will be up all month. Um, that's what they look like. That's not in our library, but that is what the banner um, exhibit looks like. So please come check it out. There's also a reading list, and there's a couple different things that you can do along with that exhibit um, if you are interested. And we have a special program um, on February 16th. That's this Thursday at 5 p.m. We have a an historian coming in and giving a special presentation on um, the Holocaust in historical context. How did it happen? So that should be really interesting. I hope that we can get folks out there. It is all age appropriate, so please, you know, if, if you know if you're doing a unit or not on World War II or that time frame, please come by and check out the special presentation at the library on February 16th at 5 p.m. Oh, that was our program we had. The night sky, it was super fun. We did constellations, moon phases, and rockets. That's our monthly kids club where we do a STEAM activity, and the kids learned a little bit about each one of those things. Our Young Creatives is tomorrow, Valentine's Day. We've got a teen artist coming, um, Ivy Nakley, I hope I'm pronouncing her last name right. Uh, she's going to be coming and doing temporary hand art with our teens. So we hope that we get some young teens coming out to join us for that. These are some of our new books that are on our, uh, our book display. They just came in. These are our adult books. You can see we've got a mixture of nonfiction and fiction. Come check it out. We've got some good reviews from some, um, some, from, from some staff as well as some patrons. And these are some of the kids' books. Again, some really great nonfiction. One of my favorites, The Science of Light. It's all about like bioluminescence and the light that we see in nature. So things like that. Come check it out. You can always find us, everything on our calendar, chrl.org. We post daily on Facebook and on Instagram. If you have any questions, just give us a call. Thank you. Thank you. Lights for day. Well, as you all know, I am not Sandy White. I'm sorry. But I am delighted that you all have her coming every week. She's gone this week to a conference in the state of Georgia where all the president's CEOs and people come together and learn new things for us. So she couldn't come tonight, so she asked me to just come and you all can kind of walk through each one of these pictures. Uh, and you have them in your computer. That's the webinars that we're having for small business development centers. Uh, they're short, but they're very good. I've looked at some of them and I think that you know if you spent the time looking at any of them, you would keep looking at them. Okay, the next one um, is we are looking for a welcome center manager. You know, we had the we had one young lady. She was excellent. Uh, she had um, she had to leave and go back to Memphis, so that didn't work out real well. So, but we've interviewed some, and we're interviewing two more this next week. So we hope to get that position filled right now. We do have an interim person who's there now. So but will not be the person who will be applying. So if you need something at the Welcome Center, there is someone there all of the time. Uh, I don't know how many of you all that have small businesses have been receiving Valentines, but some small businesses, people have been bringing them Valentines. So what this person does is sometime in the day is brings to the businesses Valentines that people in the community have sent to you. Uh, so I think it's a real neat little idea. It's uh, just fun and interesting for the community, and that's one of the things that Sandy had hoped that we could do. Okay, the last one is, uh, well, next to last, this one shows the activity, the 4, 20, and 24. It was a cold time during January, and uh, I, I guess it was February that's really rained every day, but it rained some in January. But you can see the numbers are a little bit down, uh, but it's not our peak season. How's that? Okay. All right, the next one is the, an event that's going to be happening that I hope that some of you all will take part in. The Dade County Lions Club uh, on St. Patrick's Day will be having a uh, 5K, 10K run. Uh, you can call them at a number that's probably up there. Uh, 
let's see, that's a Ronnie that Cartwright. Way. Yeah, Cartwright, Mr. Cartwright. Um, and he will be glad to help you know what to do. So let's see if we can go out and support that for the Lions Club because they do some really good things in our community. And do you all have any questions? Okay, that's all we have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, I don't know of any legal matters that we need to bring forward. I've got one thing I don't, I don't think I need to bring forward, but we might, but just in case. Back in, I think, November, October, we'll go down the phlebotomy. Yep. That's been approved by our attorneys, so I guess I need the commissioner's approval to go ahead and implement this policy. Okay. We'll add it under our new business. And it has went back with review from Steve and the attorney and all others from involved, so this is the final draft. And you all have a copy here on your desk. Yes. Any unfinished business, commissioners, we know? Or you bring up? No, any citizens' participation? Anyone like to speak to the commission? Recognize Nathan Wood. Thank you. Thank you. So I know it's early, but we'll be here before we know it. That's right. We are in full swing planning the 1945 Dade County Fair. Thank you, sir. And what you're going to see here in the front page is kind of the, the artwork of what we're going to be doing this year. Uh, if you'll notice, all the music is all local folks, except for our headliner. Anybody who's an American Idol fan will recognize her from last year. She was the runner-up at American Idol. She lives in Winchester, Tennessee. Uh, so she's done a headline for us. We start at noon. We end about, well, the fireworks are over about 10. The rest of us end about 2 a.m. in the morning. We get done uh, taking direction from Ronnie Page. Uh, so I, I just put that on the front for information purposes. The, the, the meat of the thing is behind. It's a special event application, which we have to do every year. And I guess the real meat is the very last page. If you'll look, uh, we're asking for these roads to be closed once again. It's really the same as the last four years. <coughs> Price Street, um, one end to the other. Uh, railway Lane, one end to the other. Montague Street up to the Civic Center and Bond Street up to the um, first residence. The Mason, well, the Mason, yeah. the Mason Lodge. Um, a couple things are going to be different this year. We're going to move all the food, the food trailers and food court and all that because we're getting so many of those over to the Scout Cup parking lot, which I'm hoping will be paid. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we got some information on that being Terry's going to be on that. The, uh, the car show got so big last year, we're going we're gonna to put it over. Uh, it will take the entire parking lot at the Civic Center. It will take Montague Street, and it will take part of the parking lot. Also, hopefully, going to be paid by Railway Lane, the, the big one. I think he had about 250 cars there last year. I don't know where they all came from, I have no idea. Um, Right now we've got, we've already got about 35 vendors booked and it's like way early in the game. So um, so we're just asking that you guys would, would look over our event application. Uh, Y'all helped sponsor the thing last year, much appreciated. It, it made a whole lot of things a whole lot easier. So I, we're asking for that again too. Yes, <laughs> we'd love that. <laughs> you don't have to put any money in, just say well, we're not co-sponsoring. Um, Y'all remember he said no money. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest issue that we had last year, and I don't even know if those signs are still there, but there was no pet signs everywhere in the park. We had to run a few people off, and they weren't very happy <laughs> with their with their dogs. And and my fear is, and, and of course I'm as big an animal lover as anybody, but when you put a, a dog in a strange surroundings with hundreds and sometimes thousands of people. They, and loud noises. And loud noises. They do things that they don't normally do. So um, if that's still the policy down there, we're pushing it because we're putting it on everything we put out it says no pets allowed in the park. I've been asked about that, about a pet friendly area or something with things, and I haven't ever talked to Terry about it. I don't know if he's ever been asked that or not. Yeah, I, I was down there the other day and there was Everybody had their pets. Yeah, they, it's Never. it's nobody. It's, it's not anybody like it should be. And one of the things is we do have more 
things is having the areas and dispensers. You know, a lot of the places I go to when I go to parks, camping and stuff, and we've taken iron too. Is, you know, they got the dispensers for the yeah. things and the responsibles that people should do. Uh, we've also, um, I've witnessed several times people that have been walking their dogs that have not been doing that because I've stepped in it two or three times in an area where we've been parking on city parks and walking to the restaurants on the square. Uh, we've noticed it several times and we actually seen it one day so it's, uh, you know, we want people to be responsible for it. Well, can I weigh in on that? Yeah, sure. You all know, nobody loves animals more than I do. But I will tell you, I strongly suggest that pets not be allowed that day. And I'll tell you why. We have, we have escaped it by the skin of our teeth twice. Yeah. There was a dog there three years ago, and it actually bit someone. But uh, it just happened to be an animal lover that was not going to cause any trouble. Yeah. You know, um, when dogs are just like Nathan said, when dogs are put in situations like that, if it was a if it was an animal event, that's totally different because the person that brings that animal, their mind is, is totally on that animal and whatever's going on with that animal event. But in this situation, there's a lot of loud music, there's a lot of loud noise, there's kids everywhere, there's just a lot of unknowns, and it's just really not. I mean. And y'all know how I am about animals, but it's not the place, and especially when things like fireworks start. That call, I mean, it does. You know, we experienced, we went to the, what was the place? Top of the, top of the rock. Is that the, the place over in Jasper? Yeah, top of the rock. Yeah. The pizza okay. place, whatever the name of that place is. On the top of the mountain. Yeah. Anyway, I, I know this dog was as docile as it could be. But it actually bit my grandson in the face. And it's just because it was it was in a, I mean, I could see it was right there at the edge looking over the bluff. And it just didn't know, it was just scared. And he went over to pet it and it bit him in the, I mean, I've just seen too many things. And you know how I am about animals, but I'm just saying at this event, it does they do not need to be there. So I'd suggest that when we come up under new items, we go ahead and approach that we're going to co sponsor it again. You know, so that policy as well. And so we're it's good. Street Department, yeah. everybody's been awesome down there the last four years we've done this. And, and yeah. so we need to hold this any longer to approve? Is it the same thing again? Yeah, if it's the same thing, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Y'all feel comfortable with that? We can just get this out of the way and keep yeah. moving forward. I think so. Okay. Y'all have any questions about the fire at all? Are the commissioners of the war we're going to have? Any of that stuff? <laughs> City versus county. I wish I could, but that's the weekend my family takes off. It's Tuesday. Was it the fourth? It? It's on the fourth. Yeah. North Carolina. All right. Thank you, Nathan. Thank, thank you, sir. So. All right. Anything else, Commissioner? If not, we'll go into new business. I think was. What? Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't I go there quite a bit and just sit and watch the water, you know. Uh, I see people all the time with dogs. And I know there's no dogs allowed there, but, but a lot of them, they like we always love the dog. So do we need to start keeping those people out of there as, as the police department or just let them keep coming? Or? I'm not talking about the park, I'm just talking about the Well, I know you're, you're talking, I just want to admit, I'm talking about the overall. Well, it's a question I've been asking. I've been meaning to carry on the side of what our work with it. I mean, it might be something that we all need to think about. It's, if it is, we'd have to invest in something that people can pick that up, have a policy, something that the park employees can enforce. And I don't know, that's, that's not my wheelhouse, but it's, uh, you know, we've got some areas where we might could put a little doggy area where they can run free and yeah, that get would be out. I mean, have a little that's what I was thinking about. Too. For back to just get clear. Yeah, the dog area. Well, we got that big open area over there behind uh, Eagles too. We could fence something in, put some of those little things in there. I mean, that's that's huge for some. Sometimes people have places where just really grind. Yeah. Animals get together. I mean, that could be something that we can collaborate about and see. But, but where the clearing was the other day, that would be just put a fence up, a chain fence. There's your dog, yeah. and they won't have to cross the park with their dogs to get to them. There you yeah. Talking about. Yeah. I, I, Trying to get some conversation with Soloff, uh, uh, 
meant to talk to Dwayne a few times, but Dwayne had a little medical issue he was out with. And he was tied up with an employee the other day when I stopped by, but I wanted to talk to him about some more of the clearing we're wanting to do. And then our employees have got somebody who's wanting to cut some of the trees up instead of chewing them up for firewood to come to us. So, but again, it's been so wet and we really don't have a good easement into that area. Um, McBriar Construction is one in there and done that first with us, which he had some issues on the back of his building what started that, you know, and I think we discussed that and let him do that for 2,500. He's got some other trees and I think Ronnie and Keith went in there and what trees we want to keep, we got tape around and everything else needs to go. But there's a big area over there beside Ingalls and the Solaw buildings and behind um, Circle K that is holding a lot of water. And a lot of water is causing mosquitoes and there's a ton of trash in there. And I want to talk to them to see if they also give us permission that while we're there or help donate to help clean that up and make it look nicer and neater and get some of that storm runoff easing back in because it eventually ends up to the creek, but it's the way it's doing it now, it's causing a lot of erosion and it's holding a big area of uh, mud and nastiness that don't need to be there. And then we had the guy that was, had some tents and stuff back there. We're going to need a good cleanup day in there once we get done. But that's right. the thing about the mulching is, is that it puts the mulch back on the ground and it holds the cover to keep any erosion, keep us in line with EPD. So uh, we're trying to get that settled through. But Ronnie said, you know, it might be spring before you get back in there before it dries up some more. I think that big hole in the back was the original runoff from the building of Angels building. Yeah. The catch pond, that's what that was. Yeah, and then the last grant we got when when Jennifer helped with, with that, we kind of redone that catch pond at the very back and in that section along the, that we planted and all that, so that helped catch some of that runoff. I think they put like four different sections of ponds that thing would jump through before it got on the creek and that big one in the back. I just think that area would be a good spot for Bob Park. How about we just meet y'all meet offline and call Terry and aggravate him and think about it and you know it's something that And it's a cheap thing to yeah, do. It is. Yeah, it, it can be expensive if you want to put all the things a lot of them have things to run on, jump on, run through and but it, it could be cheap. I was just thinking about it. Basically, saw this part of the reason. You just need a little section where they end. It'd be amazing how I many mm -hmm. state parks and other places we go camping, how I many you got dog areas for them. A lot of them do. It's pretty neat. Y'all's yeah. statistics show 60% of all households have dogs living inside the house, sleeping in the beds, on the couches. Now, I'm telling you, believe it or not, well, it is. Isn't that right, Nathan? <laughs> God, <it's mine. laughs> he was thinking something. <laughs> All right, items consent are in the new business. I'm going to read off the consent agenda, then we'll get into the other items we talked about. Approval of the agenda, approval of the January minutes, approval of the splash equipment for the uh, police department on the new body uh, cameras and car cameras with the three new patrol cars. We'll verify that price, but I think it was that around 72, 71 a piece. I believe what I had listed for that. Um, information about the accounting software, uh, we will scan all that in and get it into you as well. It's just more information. Approval to start the public hearings on the brewery pub ordinance for the uh, public hearings, and we'll set them dates uh, as soon as we get through and verify with the attorney on days and dates and we'll publicize that and try to have the final one the second Monday of our commission meeting probably at 5 o'clock here. And then discussion about DDA, uh, we're going to try to get that revised and just give that's informational but more or less a nod and let's get it revised and moving forward. Anything else on the consent agenda that we need to approve? No, I make a motion of the items are read to consider on the I'll make a motion. Make a motion by Commissioner Pine. Second. Second by Commissioner Wood. Any other discussion on the items? If not, all approved. Say yes. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item, we need a motion for the uh, co sponsor with the 1945 days and to approve their special use permit of the park and the Civic Center those days, just like we have for the last 
several years. I make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Hyatt. Second. Second by Commissioner Norris. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. No executive session I know of, Commissioners. Need a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Pike. <laughs> second. Second by Commissioner. Before we call a vote, I remind everybody tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Remember your sweethearts. I hope everybody has a wonderful day and a wonderful month. And please uh, come by and see anybody and talk to us. A lot of stuff going on. We appreciate the info. And I just want to thank our mayor for training us on these laptops and moving us forward into the... Again, you're seeing a rough draft. We're going to have a more in-detail thing with that. So you, He's determined to teach these old dogs new tricks. That's right. I'm very impressed. All right. He's got a lot to learn, don't he, one? All in favor for adjournment. So, yeah, I'll thank you all. Thank you all. Come back and see you.